1962, the Cold War was in full swing. The United States and the former Soviet Union were slyly trying to outmaneuver each other in a geopolitical game of chess with nuclear weapons as their playing pieces. The Cuban Missile Crisis brought the two superpowers to the brink of nuclear war. The event led Blessed John XXIII to write an encyclical in April of 1963 on peace. What John XXIII was trying to tell us is we lived in a world of danger and division, and that our faith called us to overcome those divisions and in that way to reduce the dangers. His document, Pacem in Terris, Latin for Peace on Earth, offered a new path to peace. What John does that is so groundbreaking um, is he directly sets his eyes on the entire world. And so unlike his predecessors who address their social teaching to the church, John addresses Pacem in Terris to all people of goodwill. 50 years later, Pope John's encyclical still speaks to the world. The danger that he was addressing, because it was the danger of the day, was the danger between Moscow and Washington. That was the issue. That danger has declined by 75%. He didn't focus on the just war tradition or questions of nonviolence. Instead, he focused on this big architecture of peace. What John gives us as a gift, and what's often critiqued as being naive optimism, is he thinks outside of the traditional nation state box as where everything ends uh, and pushes responsibilities and rights in the one human family, in the international community. Don doesn't say, governments go create peace on earth. He says, all of us have responsibilities to build peace on the earth, in our persons, in our families, in our communities, in our church. If any factors or any factors in society in any way threaten or diminish or make it difficult for you know, uh, people to realize you know, uh, their, their dignity, their common good, their human flourishing and their integral development, that for us is a crisis moment. What struck me was not so much the what goes on among nations, between nations, within nations, but at the very end of the letter he says, any follower of Christ should be a source of light, a source of love, and a leaven in society. And that was true in 1963. It is really true today.